Throughout the video, I designed and built my ideal jet engine until I succeeded. After my third attempt of building this jet engine, I'm certain that I did everything correctly. The chances of this blowing up on me is very unlikely. Platform. Check. Gear. Check. More gear. Stuff. More stuff. Extra more stuff. Lego stuff. Metal stuff. This is where all the thruster stuff will take place. Check out this blowtorch head that I bought from Amazon. It easily goes on top of this butane fuel can. Peak male happiness, am I right? So there's that. I hope it goes without saying, but some assemblies are required. I was growing tired of holding them under pressure, so I grabbed my dumbbell to do the job for me. But something didn't look right, so then it clicked that I can just remove one of the weight and lay it flat on top of the platform. Better. Don't mind the weight being dirty. It's just that I did some healthy experiments on top of them. The issue I have with this is that the knob isn't mechanically friendly. I'm gonna have to replace it with a gear. Then it easily slides off. Time to reassemble it. And there's the gear replacement. By now, the orange platform should have been properly glued to one another, so it's time to work on that. This will be holding the fuel can, and this will hold the engine. The torch needs to be leveled. Done. Now I need something to spin that giant gear that rotates the gas pressure. I sure figured I had something lying in my room that has exactly what I need, and it's my Traxxas slash 4x4. I need to take it apart. But first, let me just share my history with this truck. <laughs> Only way to access inside her is to open her up, so I took out the four clips required to remove the shell from the chassis and gently tossed it aside for now. And then I turned the car to the other side. Finally, it's time to undress her and expose the insides. Just need to pick the right Allen key to unscrew the servo. Then flip the car over to detach the steering from the servo. Then the servo easily comes right off. It's time to kindly put the car back in its place. The servo needs to be placed on top of this platform for better alignment. Now it's time for the big gear. Need to screw that in too. And there it is, the gas pressure adjustinator. Ah, uh, don't you love it when things just work? Just look at it, go. Looking good. The plan is to extend tubes from the torch head and insert it into the cylinder thing. Let's see how the next step goes first. I need to work on the propeller, starting off by mounting four not so well designed printed propellers with the spur gear shaft, then super gluing it in place, along with the motor. This is experimental. Visually, I think it looks cool, but I'm worried about the performance. Let's see if it blows air properly. I've noticed how the propeller is actually sucking the air rather than propelling it. So I reversed the polarity of the connection to reverse the rotation. Let's see if this solves it. So did it solve the problem? No. It's in dumb. I changed back the polarity and retested the power on this paper. The propulsion of this design has a major flaw. Here's what I noticed. It's pushing air more towards the side rather than through the hole. So this design fails. After doing some research, I learned how to research. I came across two things. One. I suck at designing a propeller. 2. Butane fuel can aren't very efficient when lying sideways. I guess this means I have to yoink someone else's 3D model of the propeller and redesign some part of this project. Sounds about right.
This better work. Oh my, beautiful. So here's what I did differently. I made sure to put some spaces between the propeller so there's actually air inflow, something I didn't consider on my previous design. And unlike the previous one to three gear ratio, now it's two to one, so it is six times more powerful. Now I'm going to finish up the fuel pressure adjustinator. It works the same exact way, just that it's upright this time. I also made a nozzle to divide the gas flow in three and connected these plastic tubes I got from Amazon. Now I can just drill the jet cylinder for the fuels to flow in and light it up. But the flames will go out as soon as the propeller turns on. Fire loves air, except if it's a high-speed air, then no, it doesn't. But let me show you something. What if the flames are trapped in, let's say, this soda can and filled with flammable chemical? Well, it can be ignited using flint and steel, flint and steel, flint and steel, flint and steel, flint and steel. Usually the flame goes out on its own. However, as soon as you put high-speed air through this, Mr. Fire becomes an angry fire. Here's another footage. Now that's a basic representation of combustion chamber. It traps mixed air and fuel to generate combustion. Initially, I thought maybe this aluminum can is strong enough to withstand the heat. No, it's not. Okay, time to go. About time I make the combustion chamber. I really hope my welding meets the standard considering the fact I'm a total beginner. Let's make a hole for the fuel pipe and see how it performs so far. Turns out I welded it so bad the fuel just leaks out between every pieces. Need to make sure I cover every unwanted hole this time. I was told this looks like it was found at the bottom of the ocean. But hey, it works flawlessly. Never judge a book by its cover. Let's do a short test run, shall we? On first impression, the fuel has insufficient ejection. And I guess I haven't considered the fact that the flame will literally eat my propeller no matter how fast it spins. Now it ceased to even exist. But the point still stands. The fuel ejection is way too weak. It's simply not good enough for my standard. I figured the torch head limits the flow big time. But what if I connect this directly to the butane fuel can? Right off the bat, you see significant difference. Let's now test the performance of this one. You see, this is what I want. You know what that means? Redesigning and hours and hours of wait for my new models to print because my second design was a fail too. Oh my fucking god, dude. Last try before I go bankrupt.
this is the overall build. I was looking through my spare parts and found this steel servo arm. I'd say it's a much better replacement. Time for the final touch-ups. The trigger controls the gas flow, the wheel controls the motor, and lastly this channel 3 button enables the igniter. There's this issue of the flame shooting from the front. The way around it is to make the motor autopilot on low speed. I connected one end of this high voltage generator to the cylinder and the other end to this rod. The volt generator is controlled by this relay switch for that button on the remote. This 3.7 volt battery goes through the relay switch to power the high voltage generator. This whole thing can be powered by this two cell LiPo battery. And most importantly, I made sure the engine is not in any direct contact with plastic parts. Let's also not forget the fireproof propeller this time. Here's the final result. Oh boy, I guess the gear ratio really put a toll on this ESC, consisting of power cutoff and malfunctioning. Anyway, I ordered a better replacement. And good to go. Hell yeah. So this concludes the video. What do you guys think of my creation? Let me know.